Right, it's the end of the Soviet term. They picked up initiative uh, for the last turn of the month, which I think is the 29th. So we're 29th of December. I haven't done the German turn yet. Uh, we'll probably get to that in just a little bit. But what I thought I would do is, uh, first of all, I'll show you a few things in terms of, well, let's just go over the map and then uh, we might talk about some peculiarities uh, in another, uh, another session. So the, the Soviets reinforced Yaroslav down here. We made that mistake of moving that 12-2-2 uh, away from Yaroslav and uh, long story short, you know, that regiment and uh, paratroopers underneath it jumped into Yaroslav or attempted to get into Yaroslav but couldn't quite make it. So that, that's been rectified, but it does block supply, trace supply for that area. But we have this extender here underneath the blue bark. And while the Germans did a really good job of trying to extend a very narrow front to try and block trace supply to choke off the Soviet machine, uh, and coming from the north from this angle here as well, down around through here, and pushing the truck down with uh, supplies and HQ, HQs and all sorts of fun stuff, uh, that extender can just do the wiggly wiggly and, uh, and, and get around here and, and, and make a uh, connection here. Which we reinforced by moving all these units in here to try and uh, slow down any push to cut supply again. Now, the reality is that uh, this is a dump that's in Moscow. Here yeah, there's 4, 8, 12, 16. There's 21 SP of uh, supply. That will last a turn, maybe two, because it would have to feed everybody. And as you can see, there's a plethora of units. There's all sorts of stuff going on all over the place. And look, look, there's a uh, there's an air attack I've got to resolve. <coughs> uh, this section of the map for the Germans is uh, moving very slowly, primarily because I I had focused much of my rail conversion effort on the south uh, uh, area near Tula and points otherwise. Uh, <coughs> so the reserve area is lacking trucks, <laughs> it's lacking wagons, and it's really starting to creak at the knees in terms of the ability to punch supply forward. I've been very lucky in that I've relied on previous supply and I'm now just about out, particularly since I've had to push bucket loads up to get the keep these guys moving in here and pressing uh, pressing against the, uh, the whole area there. So uh, so that's kind of the northern section of the map. And if we look over here, we've got, uh, looking at the Tula Oka River area, the counterattack, this is the second counterattack by the Soviets here, has proven to be uh, not sustainable. Uh, you know, you've got to, I think, as the Soviets, you know, I wrote about this when we first started playing, right? That you've really got to get, if you're going to do this, you've got to go in big and you've got to have good supply, you've got to have good units, and you've got to have enough punch and, and staying power to make a material difference. And what has ended up happening twice now is that, you know, I've brought reinforcements in here and uh, at uh, Golovo here and <clears throat> push them forward across the frozen river. We actually broke the trace, ex trace supply extender, captured some wagons. Uh, the Germans turn around and you know they slowed down their attack here and just counterattacked and took things off and picked one unit to focus on that I, I hadn't managed to be able to get into a stack uh, or a decent enough stack. And that caused problems. Then it broke up the counterattack. Very, very challenging to do a well structured Soviet counterattack unless you have the depth of force. Uh, we, the Soviets have put this one little stack here at our supply and uh, they rolled for supply last turn and survived. They're a five rated unit so they're going to be okay. But that's looking very tenuous there for the Germans. And in and amongst here, the Soviets have pulled together several little attacks, one here, one here. Uh, the air attacks however did not DG the units. And given my experience with my massive attack here that had uh, 51 factors attacking 10 with a minus one to the AR. There's a five rated unit underneath here. I was a little surprised for the Soviets. They rolled terribly on their surprise. They rolled terribly for the air attack, lost a step. 
There's no artillery. I mean, I've lost most of my artillery. Uh, they spent three SP to attack and lost two steps. It's just a brutal result. Uh, the Germans are sitting there kind of giggling behind their little sandbags as they try and meander in to uh, cut off Moscow. All right. Now, the interesting part of the map is, well, this is one of the many interesting areas, but here's an area where we could start building up some forces and potentially it will not be a surprise attack by any means, but launch an attack against Kharkov or tool or RL and uh, and cut supply the supply chain for this whole southern flank of the German army here. And I think uh, I need to have a look at the re reinforcements that come on in January. There's a fair amount that come in the second or third turn, I think it is. You know, there's a there's some thinking that I might if I was going to keep playing this, I would put them in here. And this then changes the game for, this, for the Germans. The Germans are now no longer driving the direction of the game. They would have to respond to this by pulling units back. Okay. Uh, here around the, the northern sections of the Don, we're, we're, we're just hanging tough here. Uh, the Germans' uh, fourth panzer is kind of a, in a holding mode along with uh, 17th. I'm going to pause right here and we'll start up a second video for the, for the southern half of the map.